Nikki Beatty on BBC Radio London, and we are talking addictions during this hour of the show. Jeremy Clarkson has apparently finally quit a 43-year smoking habit after a serious health scare. So we wanted to know what makes people quit their addictions and if there's ever an easy way to kick a habit. Sarah Jakes was a smoker for 34 years. She switched to vaping a few years ago. Now, she is also a trustee of the New Nicotine Alliance. They're a group of consumers and academics interested in raising awareness of harm reduction products. She joins me now. Sarah, good morning to you. Morning, Nikki. Can we go back uh, a little bit first? And can I just ask you when you started smoking and whether you can actually analyse why you started? Oh, well, I mean, that was peer pressure. I was 14 at the time, and um, my best friend had a big brother who smoked, and it was literally us pinching his cigarettes to smoke in the local park. And was it to look cool? Was it because you thought he was cool? Can you remember? Yeah, I think so. I think that I think that was a big part of it. It was something that all the cool kids do. Um, although looking back on it now, obviously I was I was very very wrong. But um, but yeah, that's how it started. I think it was um, a need to fit in um, and be one of those cool kids, and that obviously developed as I got older and started working and had money to buy cigarettes and developed into um, a full time habit. And when and why did you quit? Well, I tried to quit several times over the years, um, over the 34 years that I was smoking. And I was actually successful two or three times for two or three years at a time. But there was always something missing. So there was I was always looking for an excuse to start smoking again because I missed something about it. Mm. Um and then four and a half years ago, I bought an e-cigarette to use in my car um, because I didn't want it to smell of smoke and I was heading up the M6 to Manchester. And two weeks later, I found that I was using the e-cigarette all the time and I no longer even wanted the cigarette. So for me, it was a very easy transa- uh, transition from um smoking to vaping and in terms of vaping do you see yourself quitting vaping because there must be side effects to that that we'll eventually discover not the least of which you're constantly putting something in your mouth and breathing things in well for me that's not a problem i enjoy vaping i always enjoyed smoking i enjoyed the use of nicotine um now the royal college of physicians has said that vaping is likely to be at least 95% safer than smoking. And that residual 5% is the... You're willing to take that risk, right? Well, it's a recognition that we don't have the long-term studies. Mm. But as yet, there is no indication that the harm will be anywhere near as much as 5%. But obviously, because we haven't got those long-term, um, that long-term data, then then there has to be an air, you know, a, a, a small amount built in for caution. But yes, you know, for me, I'm prepared to take that chance because I know that if I was to quit vaping as well, then I would be back in that cycle of, well, you know, I'm missing something, I want something. So you see, you've analysed that, Sarah. Is there a part of you that's ever thought, right, I want to explore what it is that I'm missing so that maybe I can stop that behaviour pattern? Or, Or have you never gone that far? I don't, personally, I don't think I've ever gone that far. I, I think, I think humans are naturally pleasure seekers and some of us more so than others. Um, do you think I, that we can be pleasure seekers without having a habit though? I suppose that would be the ideal, that we had the pleasure once in a while, but that we didn't need to keep seeking it. Well, that, yeah, of course that would be ideal if there was nothing in the world that was addictive that we liked. <laughs> exactly. But unfortunately, the real world isn't like that. No, exactly. So what do people say about their addictions when they come to you? Well, what, my impression is that when it comes to smoking, if you look at the surveys, then most people say that they want to quit. But for me, that translates into people who feel that they should quit. You know, they know that it's doing them harm in, this, in terms of health. And for a lot of people now, it's, it's very expensive, it's very expensive to smoke. But that's not the same thing as wanting to quit. So mm. there are a lot of people who I think would benefit from, from getting nicotine, um, in, in terms of smokers from a less harmful source. 
Um, and that's really what we at NNA do. Is, you know, we try to teach people about those less harmful sources, and we also try to teach people like regulators about less harmful sources so that they don't regulate them out of existence, which seems to be a temptation for some. And just a quick question, which mm. which isn't specific to our discussion this morning. Mm. Do you at NNA believe that vaping should be allowed to happen in public? Because if, it's, if there's only a 5% risk of harm, why shouldn't people be allowed to vape? Well, that 5% risk of harm is to the person who's actually vaping. There's right, actually so what no about people around you? Yeah. yeah, there's actually no known harm to people around you, and so <clears throat> yeah, at, at, at NNA, no, we do, we we don't think there should be restrictions on people vaping in public. But that said, people have also got to be considerate. You know, even if it's not harming them, that doesn't mean that non-smokers, non-vapers want to be sat in a cloud of strawberry flavoured mist. I mean, that is so, the problem. It's the smell of it, isn't it? The smell well, yeah, can I be mean, some, qu quite horrible to people who have yeah. sensitive olfactory systems. Well, there are 7,000 different smells. Oh, my from, so goodness. You, so you can choose one that doesn't perhaps quite offend people so much. And, and there are ways of vaping that um, reduce very much the mist that's produced yeah. um, to practically zero. So, but, you know, again, that that is really, okay, you know, a situation where etiquette should kick in. Yes. In consideration for other people. We wouldn't. We would not support um, across-the-board uh, bans in the same way that they ban smoking. Sarah Jakes, what a pleasure to talk to you. Thank you so much. Uh, she's a trustee with NNA, the New Nicotine Alliance, and they essentially, well, they're consumers and academics, and they're raising awareness about harm reduction products. So vaping is one of them. So taking the conversation on a step from...